Prime Minister Nine, welcome back. You're watching Sportbox Live from London. The excitement builds in the CNBC newsroom as we come towards the opening of another equity market session. A very chuffed Dan Mann has just learned that he will be working well into the evening at the London Stock Exchange. You have to make because Simon, I off. would have loved to have done if you would have told me yesterday. But one's going away for the weekend. Well, who's, what do you mean one's going away? Who's that? Well, myself. Unfortunately, oh leaving here round about three o'clock and away for the weekend. You'll leave a mammoth hole in our coverage this evening if you don't go down to the I, LSE. I'm covering for Cutmore. You have to go down to the London Stock Exchange. I really would have done if there was a little bit more notice. Anyway, we'll have to discuss this a little bit later, Simon. But for now, I have to report to you that uh, bond market is just making highs round about now. We have seen the uh, the euro firming up. Guy, over to you. Thanks, Dan. Don't worry about it. Simon was complaining earlier on in the show that he hasn't spent enough time down at the London Stock Exchange. That's, so this I've that obviously well, a perfect guy. opportunity Correct. for him to get more of the that. Actually, I the London think Stock so. Exchange is extremely luxurious. It I didn't realise how, well, really yeah. how well it. How well everybody is treated. I haven't even found the subsidised canteen, but I believe that it's, it's on the top floor. Right? Oh. I think they're all making a little party for you this afternoon, Simon, so I hear, because they've enjoyed you there so much uh, throughout the week. I'm often enjoyed where I go. Mm. Right. Uh, that's, that's not what I heard. Anyway. That's, well no, that's not how you said it. <laughs> we'll just leave that one alone, you know, shall we? I went to the London Stock Exchange for the first time here just recently, and, and what I like the most is that they tell you to take an elevator up to the studios. You know, so you walk over, you take the elevator all the way up, and then it turns out that there's a little tiny stairwell that can actually take you down, you know, which is right there in front of you, but it's hidden behind yeah, the but screen. They, don't they usually ask so, the question, are you all right on the stairs, first of all, the answer to which for me was yes, and they put you in the lift. Okay. Maybe they, did you have those heels on, and they thought, ah. No, maybe they just thought I wasn't quite up to it in terms of the sportiness. I doubt that. Obviously don't I doubt project. that anybody would be left with that Simon, well known for his athleticism. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> Particularly on a Saturday night. I've been practicing the crowd-pleasing steps, you'll be glad to know, Guy. And yeah, they I'm, will I'm, be available at a disco in London this weekend. <laughs> I, saw Simon, I saw Simon Hobbs <laughs> in our newsroom the other day, Guy, wearing trainers. It was very it, it sweet. It does happen occasionally. It was very, very it sweet. It does happen occasionally. It's quite scary. Like, we know. You just felt like hugging him because suddenly, you know, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think I look very cute in my trainers. I've been told many times that I do. Oh, good. Glad for you. Good for you. I think we'll just leave this whole subject alone, shall How we? How are we doing on the run-up to the opening bell, Guy Johnson? What are the major themes? What do the CAC futures indicate? Well, let's find out, shall we? As if by magic they appear in front of you. That's the 10-year bund. But I tell you what, if the director puts my hot board up, he'll be able to see what's going on in the CAC futures. Smooth as ever, the opening yep. bell. Ah, oh. sharp, as, yes. sharp as you like. There you go. CAC futures down 1.2% uh, at the moment. In terms of the stocks that we're going to be focusing on today, Vivendi, obviously that record loss. Big story, though, Vivendi. Shelley Carabelf standing by as ever. Hello, Shelley. Hello. Long standing by here. Sorry about Simon's uh, lack of athleticism there. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> couldn't resist. Record loss for Vivendi, 23 billion euros. All we're really talking about here today is debt. Guy, with that, back to you. Thank you very much indeed. Shelley slides out. Who slides in? None other than John Holland. There he is. John, what's going on in Frankfurt? Good morning. <laughs> it's looking like about a 15 to 20 percent uh, points down on the open here. We're only four points above the uh, seven and a half year low of 24.33. Have more at the opening bell. Back to you guys. John, thanks very much indeed. A pleasure as ever. John's off. We could have a lot of fun with that, couldn't we? Anyway, we'll do that another time. Uh, in terms of the market open, we are expecting these uh, main markets to open into negative territory. There is the uh, the CAC futures right now, down around 1.25%. Looks like another tough day. Blix, obviously, is going to be what we need to look forward to. 1600 Central European time. CNBC will carry that live. Good morning, Friday morning. You're watching Squawk Box live from London. I'm Simon Hobbs, sitting in for Jeffrey Cutmore. Difficult times. Ahead of Hans Blix delivering a key report on weapons inspections in Iraq, U.S. President George W. Bush. Vigash C. pushes the case for war against Saddam Hussein. Speaking in the early hours of this morning, he said he is ready to force through a second U.N. resolution within days. And yes, we'll call for a vote. No matter what the whip count is, we're calling for the vote. Good morning, I'm Guy Johnson. Watch out uh, for trade a little bit later on AOL. Well. It's going to be a busy day in terms of the data. We've got the employment report coming out. That's going to be keenly watched. We've got some key data being emerged, emerging from Europe as well. Good morning, I'm Louisa Boys, and Tokyo's Nikkei closes down to its lowest level since March of 1983. We'll be looking a bit closer at that and talking more about why. And good morning to you. I'm Serena Allowed. President George W. Bush says the U.S. will force a U.N. vote on the second Iraq resolution in the next few days. 
The U.S. president has reportedly been making fresh attempts to persuade Russian President Putin to back the motion. It's clear that world leaders remain divided over the crisis in Iraq. It's hoped that testimony from Hans Blix at four o'clock could give them a reason to unite. We'll examine the issues with Professor Michael Clark, director for the International Policy Institute at King's College here in London, 9.35 Central European time. Peter Toogood, Director and Head of Research at Forsyth Partners, joins us as the guest host. Good morning. Good morning. Peter sees the global economy as too dependent on the United States. He remains bearish, predict bearish on equities, I assume. Mm -hmm. Predicting further downside before the bear market ends. Peter sees <coughs> excuse me, the lack of urgency shown by policymakers as very worrying. He's not on his own in that. Corporate bonds have clearly disconnected from the equity market, he says. And the final leg of the bear market is the discounting of the consumer recession, which is currently upon us. So it's all quite cheery then, Pete. Oh, corporate bonds are fine. That's corporate okay. Bonds. Corporate bonds. Swear by them. Sportbox at CNBCEurope.com is our email address, as you'll be well aware. Uh, it's going to be an interesting two hours. Uh, the sentiment, obviously, is extremely poor almost wherever you turn, except for... Corporate bonds. Let's get over to Guy. Hey. Yes. Yeah. We just gave him. We just prod him, and he can repeat it. Corporate <laughs> bonds. Yeah. Might make the show more interesting. But Asia has turned once again uh, into a pretty negative story. We've been hearing the story throughout the morning that it's a tough, tough session out there. But what happened? I'll tell you in one second, Guy. First of all, let me just show you what we're looking at in terms of uh, the Asian closes, because obviously we saw a very difficult close on the Asian market yesterday. We saw the uh, Topix in Tokyo closing down by 2.46%. That's 796. That's the lowest level since uh, 90, since 84. So that will obviously uh, be uh, be one of the uh, interesting uh, interesting stories to follow, or some of the interesting stories to follow as we go ahead uh, today. Uh, Simon, let's go back to you now and get some more. So you've done squat box all week then, Louisa? I have indeed. She's working way too hard. She's setting a very bad precedent. <laughs> well, cut, making up for cut well, more. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I'm just having too much fun with all you boys, you know. Can't be ripped away from Not you. Not for the first time. <laughs> what exactly do you what mean by that? Excuse me. It's before, it's before the watershed, do you mind? <laughs> Ten Don't worry, the regulator would never be up this early. Okay. Have you been having a nice late. week on afternoons yeah. then? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, the afternoons that I actually got on my rest two weeks every six months. Yes. Um, so, so, so you've so well, you only missed out on one of them, haven't you? Sorry? you only missed out on one of them, and you had last Friday off. So. I did a, a, a stonking power lunch yesterday. Obviously, you missed it, Guy. I'm surprised. I was probably at home sleeping. Were you? <laughs> Sorry, did I miss the, the fantastic ECB rate-cutting phenomenon? Oh. What, the ECB special? Not the to ECB. be maligned? No, very rarely yeah. to be maligned. Gallows humour. Mm. It's, a, it's in a gallows humour. It's in a Louise, just, just, I can, just run us through. Can you get your data up and just run us through very briefly, not at length, if you would. The worst performing, uh, the worst performing companies on the AEX, Avenda Molin, off by 25%. Guy, that's it's quite extraordinary. Not, not a good result. No, it's it okay, isn't. Simon. We've got corporate bonds. Don't worry about it. It's all alright. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry? You're so damn cynical, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Cynical? What, what has th th this option, this three days rest period that I did get, what, what, <laughs> what it did enable me to do? <laughs> My heart bleeds for you, Simon. Yeah, it really I does. Can see, so I, can, I can see you're really happy to be yeah. going you know at one o'clock in the morning. Simon, yeah. Simon you're so, not so. hearing the other side of it, though, because Guy has been complaining every single day about having to, get up, uh, having to get up at your so, shift, Simon. But and you've I been get, doing it for three When I do it, I get in for two o'clock. He's waltzing in an hour before they go on air. Exactly. Yeah, but I do work beforehand. That's the difference, you see. He does. In your I have to say, he does. No, he works Renwer. in the afternoon. <laughs> guy, works, guy works very hard in the afternoon. So, At what? Well, Guy and I have long conversations about the next day's show every single afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's evident. It's, it's evident on air. Uh, <laughs> for the back. moment. For the moment. Thank you very much. Guy Johnson oh, what and Louise Boyerson. Um, <laughs> there's a rebellion. There's no rebellion. There's you can rebellion. always there's smell rebellion. the stench. There's a rebellious state Peter. of gallows humour about um, this morning. Yeah. Welcome back. You're watching Squawk Box Friday morning on CNBC. Let's get the latest international news with the very lovely Serena Alar. Thanks, Simon. Good morning. President George W. Bush says the U.S. will force a U.N. vote on the second Iraq resolution in the next few days. That brings you up to date with the very latest on the world news front. Simon.
Thank you very much. Through Neil Lau, the latest international news. We'll take a break. Uh, the email's uh, beginning to come through for Peter Toogood, our guest host today, um, about valuations, times to buy, capitulation, what might it finally be? And we'll ask the question whether or not capitulation might involve uh, the failure, ultimately, uh, of a large financial institution that can actually bring uh, these equities higher. Stay with us, t -Biz. No, Sport Pops, Friday morning. <laughs> Reports are coming in that part of the fence marking a demilitarized zone on the Iraq-Kuwait border have been cut down after the, over the last two days. It's unclear who is responsible for the act, but early reports indicate it may be part of U.S. military preparations ahead of a possible war in Iraq. Previous official statements confirm that the fence would need to be dismantled in the event of war. Copenhagen 6-10 in Brussels, pretty miserable across that board, but a bit of sun in Madrid and Milan. Your high in Milan today, 15 that, degrees. What's that in Zurich? What's, what's that there? Is that, that's, that's rain, I'm afraid. And, the, and Stockholm is? A bit of snow. The fluffy one's snow. The fluffy one's snow. You always get stuck on these well, icons. Well, yeah, I'm not very good at the icons. You know, you know what Ross was saying the other day? What? He was saying that the, the presenters should actually say what the weather's like, do symbols like, you know, sun and well, like rain and... Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, you work with Ross Westgate. Yes. yes. <laughs> do, you know, um, do you know? It's good exercise while you're in the studio. I think that's what, what it is. So, Sorry. Guy? How would you think high winds? High winds? Yeah. I'd have to get you in to do that. We get the waffler in. <laughs> the bi Vodafone waffler, we get him back. Um, what, do we know what sort of fence this is then? That this? I mean, is it like a, a, a big. <laughs> it's a big fence, yes, that, that needs to come down in the event of war, Simon. But we don't know who's actually been breaking down this fence. It's but as I said, we'll say it? it's what, probably what will the make US. National headlines. <laughs> a fence is There's broken. a bit of fence missing. It must be a. It must be a nasty neighbour story, isn't it? <laughs> nasty <laughs> neighbour. My Q fence, didn't you? You damaged my fence. So I'm going well, to get as the neighbours are Iraq and Kuwait, I think they're probably not getting on terribly well. Uh, well already I think that's probably fairly true, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Can I come in? Um, is that it? That's it from me. When Simon, will you be back? back? Back to you. I'm going to be back, not in the 8 o'clock hour, but no. I'll be back at 8.30. Right, but you'll, you'll presumably come running through if anything happens. Of course, breaking news. Serena so Allow with the latest international news and weather. Peter Tugood is still our guest host, hanging on in there for another equity session Friday morning, looking for an open in about 11 minutes' time. Uh, don't forget, of course, that you've got uh, Hans Blick speaking tonight at 4 o'clock. I should imagine, actually, that things are fairly much on hold uh, until the weekend. You, would you cover your positions in advance of a weekend like this? Yeah, I imagine you probably would if you were a hedge so manager. So close your positions, cut yes, the shorts. Indeed. Or would indeed. you keep the shorts open? No, you wouldn't. Most of them shut on Friday. They're short shorts Friday. Uh, Professor Michael Clark will also join us a little bit later on from the International Policy Institute at King's College to talk us through why George W. Bush is going to the effort of asking the United Nations a question, the answer to which will presumably be again now.